John Kyle, Charles Schumer, John Boehner, and Chris Dye, Michael Bloomberg, Barney Frank, Richard Shelby, Rob Portman, Gene Sperling, Congressman Paul Austin, Goolsby, Douglas Holtz, Aiken, Henry Paulson, Henry Paulson, Hank Paulson, Henry Paulson. I don't like the fact that we have to do this. I hate the fact that we have to do it, but it's better than the alternative. And once we stabilize the markets, we then have to take actions to make sure this doesn't happen again. I think there should be a mortgage relief component to this. Are you going to add Christmas tree this bill? No, we will not Christmas tree this bill. The times are too urgent. Everyone has their own desires and needs. It's going to have to wait. Does that mean that the Secretary Paulson is going to get what he's asked for, a completely clean bill? Not necessarily. And again, we're, we're all talking about this right now. I had a long conversation with Senator Shelby, my Republican counterpart, last evening on the Banking Committee. But I can tell you this, this is not going to be 700 trillion, um, $700 billion, it's going to be about a trillion dollars at least. The Fed chairman, with all due respect to Chairman Bernanke, uh, he said basically we had this contained. I fear that this is not contained and we will repeat it again if we don't have massive, tough regulatory reform. I think the chances are better than 50-50 that we'll get it done by the end of the week and hopefully it won't be bogged down with too many extraneous and costly uh, provisions. But we have a difference on what's clean. Uh, we don't think that uh, trying to stimulate the economy given the six plus percent unemployment, let's not forget other problems as we focus on this one. I think this strengthens the argument for a surtax on the wealthiest people in this country who are among those who made these mistakes. The people who are making over a million dollars a year, a surtax on their incomes, that's one way to get the people who made these mistakes to contribute to the cost of undoing it. In general, when the economy is in decline, you don't want to raise overall taxes. In fact, uh, those of us who believe in a stimulus package are saying you ought to pump money into the economy. But if next year is going to be the year that Barney Frank and Chris Dodd, if he's the Senate Banking Committee Chairman, and the new Treasury Secretary are going to have some of the toughest decisions to make we've seen, certainly since the savings and loan bailout and maybe even since the 1930s. You, know, you can't describe yeah. on Sunday morning uh, how ugly this picture would look mm. if we don't act. Which this no, could be the be, most be serious worse. financial yeah. crisis uh, that the world has ever dealt with. What is amazing to me is however many days we are before the election, how marginalized the candidates have become. Second economic stimulus package, $50 billion or whatever, attached to this uh, crisis legislation. Well, Senator Obama believes we need to do both. Um, he, uh, As part is, of the same piece of legislation? To, he's going to press for both, but he is going to, as he thinks everyone should do, work in a way to make sure this is swift. I think it's, um, it's a welcome relief from the partisanship we've seen in Washington and the politics of an election year that uh, Chris Cox is a smart, competent guy. He's a former colleague of mine. Uh, I think he's doing uh, a, a decent job in a very tough situation. So I, I do not share the fact that Chris Cox ought to go. It's good to see Senator McCain has suddenly become a champion of financial oversight and uh, regulatory oversight. He, George Bush, Phil Graham, and their crew has been about burning down the rules of the road. First thing I'd say, Austin, is if you got the whole econ team together in Miami and that's all you could come up with, I'll give you a do-over. You want the price structure to adjust. You want the price of houses to go down. You don't want to fix the price of housing. And believe me, it wouldn't be that tough. It would be a bad year. There, but this way, it's going to be a bad decade. Are you going to endorse in the presidential race before the election? Well, I've listened to both candidates, and I want to make sure that for as long as I can, I have a good dialogue with both, that I can give them my views and the perspective of New York. I represent 8.3 million people. Would you like to serve a third term under these circumstances? Well, I have uh, 466 days left to go in my job, and I was sort of thinking maybe to be host of this program. Um, that would be a nice job for me. Probably pays a little bit better than a dollar a year I get now. He wants to provide real tax relief, I, significant I, I, tax relief Senator, for the middle class. Senator, I'm not asking you that question. Wait a second. I'm, no, no, I'm well, asking you a question. Okay. Well, forgive me. Go I'm ahead. asking you a specific question. I'd like you to answer I'd it. I'd like to give an answer. I'd, but I'd, the, the You talk too much.